This is a podcast presented by Hard to Find Media. Subscribe to Hard to Find Media on YouTube.com slash Hard to Find Media Network. This shit is free. Share it. Blast it. Turtlenecks and the power of persuasion today on Smallville Freaks. <laughs> so many turtlenecks. Whatever it is, I can handle it. You're the one always telling me I need to find my destiny. Well, one thing's for certain, it's not here in Kansas. Hmm? Hmm? You saved my life. Hmm? He's a rather extraordinary young man. What do you think? Hello and welcome to Smallville Freaks, a podcast 15 years too late. I am Mike Pelly. And I'm Jason Lamb. And we're discussing episode 11 called Hug. Hug. <laughs> Another episode with a really, in a, like, does it, the title doesn't really match the episode at all. Not at all. Not like, at I, th- all. I thought there was going to be some crazy hugging, like hard <laughs> hugging in this episode. Like maybe a villain that just hugs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I, when I first saw the title, I was like, oh, is it going to be kind of like that um, shake? Jitters. Jitters. <laughs> jitters. I thought it was, uh, was going to be like a jitters episode where, because he did hug that guy and like kill him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he literally, like he shakes. Like it's his thing is yeah. he has like tremors or jitters or whatever. Yeah. But this one, there was no hugging going on. I don't no, know if a no single hugging. person just, hugged. Just handshakes. Yeah. Just some solid handshakes. Even with the double hand, you know, you do the handshake and then you put the hand over the 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 both hands yeah it's just uh. no matter i mean no matter what you you're doing in this uh you 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 don't hug you don't call a handshake a hug no no unless that's like some term like for handshakes that we didn't know about (laughs) hug hand hugging let me give you a hug and somebody like opens their arm and you stick out your hand (laughs) and they're like what (laughs) yeah it would be just as confusing as this episode so uh Let's dive right in. Um, you know, we've got a lot of turtlenecks in the episode. <laughs> um, we got some 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 crazy people living in the in the forest of Smallville. This metropolis slime ball, as I wrote on my notes, and then in parentheses I wrote Bob because that's his fucking name. Uh, he wants the Smallville Senate seat. Yeah, and you kind of realize right off the bat that he has the power of persuasion, kryptonite infused somehow. We don't know. Convince somebody to kill themselves. At the beginning. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mr. Bob Rickman. Yeah, Rickman. He's like, I, I want Smallville. And the guy's just like, no, you don't get it. And he's just like, go kill yourself. <laughs> and, uh, and he did. Uh, but it's interesting that like it shows that scene in the beginning. And then like very next, it, it jumps over to him actually having banquets and shit for himself like to become the senator of Smallville. Yeah. It was pretty fast. He's so convinced of everything. Uh, that he's gonna get it, and he and he does, right? Yeah, he does. Um, so and I, we introduce what crazy Kyle, crazy Kyle, who is um, his rival, who learned mm-hmm. how to manipulate the same powers, right, of persuasion, where you can get people to do anything. They were, I guess, and this is really boring. So tune out if you don't want to listen to this part. But basically, they were partners back in the eighties. They would do business together, <laughs> and a lot of cocaine because it was uh, the eighties well, and it was a business. lot of cocaine. Um, and then they were like in a car, I guess, at, together, and were struck by <laughs> struck by a meteor, and now they have power of persuasion. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Sure, Smallville, fine. <laughs> and one of them decided to use his powers for evil, and the other one decided to completely shun just going to society, exile. going to exile uh, because he was too dangerous, and the temptation was too great. Yeah, and he's so, supposed to be like the good guy. He was noble. But what's interesting is that uh, Chloe and Clark and Lana riding horses in the beginning of the episode. Oh, that's right, and. <laughs> and it's really kind of quirky because it's like Chloe can't ride a horse. She's like trying to tag behind us, but like can't ride a horse and it keeps going into bushes and stuff. So it's a metaphor for their whole relationship yeah. where she's kind of like a third wheel to whatever's going on between the two. Of yeah, them. I guess that would be good for a drama segment. But it, it, what happens is like Lana like goes off. Uh, Crazy Kyle spooks the horse and never explains why. Yeah. It also never explains why Crazy Kyle was had a camera and he was filming her. Oh yeah, that's right. It's like right. a weird 
thing it's like a weird subplot that never fl- fl- like went into fruition yeah and i feel like for a lot of these things they just they there was a longer scene they had filmed a lot more footage but for the editing for whatever reason they leave in a bunch of shit that doesn't matter things don't add up yeah and that's smallville for you but we love it <laughs> um there's this one spot in the episode this one scene where jonathan finally uh, agrees to shake the hand of Bob. Right. Who's trying to buy his farm, but for why? For land to tear it all down and turn it into a wasteland, basically. Right. He wants to compete with Lex just for the sake of competing with Lex yeah. in Smallville and building yeah. his own factory there. But he shakes uh, Jonathan's hand and like it shows kryptonite glow go from right into his eye. We get like a straight up POV of going into Jonathan's head. Yeah, like like all down his like ocular nerve or yeah. whatever, and it's so unnecessary yeah. to to portray that he's basically getting mind control. It has nothing to do with his eye, mm-hmm. and it's crazy that like they spent that much money on the budget for the CG for that that scene. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so that was interesting. Uh, there is a like a weird hippie rock star doctor that um, that Lex brings into the episode. Which oh yeah, he should. This guy, this guy. Fuck, I don't even know if we ever see him again because I don't have any memory of this guy. And Lex pays him in drugs. He like a little brown bag on the counter yeah. or whatever. What is this? <laughs> what is going on? Was this supposed to be a character that was gonna like be part of the cast moving forward? Like, I think it's just like a weird like quirk for the character that of course like Lex would have this sort of shady weirdo under the table doctor for times he doesn't want like a medical record of bad things that happen in his family. That makes sense. Um, Which also in this episode, they do talk about club zero. Yes. uh, Which was brought up a few more times recently. (laughs) Yeah. So far, so far it's been uh, just sort of mentioned, but this club zero thing as you, as the episodes go by, you know, you'll start to hear more and more about it and finally you get to see it. And whether or not it pays off, that's up to you. We'll see when we get there. <laughs> um other than that, like, you know, again, Lex gets persuaded to which this is a weird thing. Okay. So Bob finally gets to <laughs> Bob. Bob, Bob fi- Rickman. Bob finally gets to Lex, shakes his hand, right? Now you would think that you know, him having the ability to was able to convince Lex to do anything. It would be something business related, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, like the guy, you can have this guy like turn shit over for Lionel and he just chooses to have Lex set the car on fire and he could have told anybody to do that. Yeah. Why did it have to be Lex Luthor? He tries to set it on fire when Clark and uh, Kyle, Kyle are in, in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Bob could have just asked any civilian civilian around that area to be like, "Hey, go set that thing on fire." <laughs> why right. go why go through all the trouble of trying to convince Lex to shake her fucking hand? Yeah. It's just weird. I don't get it, but you know, whatever. In the end of the episode, uh Lex and Clark are together in the barn, staring off into the sunset, kind of having that Luke Skywalker moment, and it's zooming <laughs> out, and this might be a little bit in the geek lore, but like it shows Clark and Lex Luthor standing together, and uh, and we'll get there. But it's a very symbolic yeah. imagery. So let's get into the drama segment. Drama. Trust me, you don't want to know me the way you think you do. Clark, that's my decision to make. Oh my God. <laughs> They're riding horses on a date, and oh my God, Chloe had to tag along. Why is, yeah, why is Chloe even there? <laughs> I, don't, I don't even understand. She can't ride a horse. <laughs> They're Maybe clearly you- like not helping her. Like they don't want her there or else they would be like, all right, no. so here's how you control your horse. Like yeah. do this, do that. And like, no, they're just like, ah, she's fine in the back while we catch up. Yeah. Chloe is being very vocal about the fact that she's having a lot of trouble. It kind of starts out nice where Lana and Cl- Clark are kind of, you know, just having a little conversation or whatever. Obviously Whitney and Lana are back because in the last episode he got them back together. But then Lana gets pissed at Clark the whole Whitney versus Kyle thing happened. Oh yeah. Because he, he spooked the horse. Yeah. And, and Lana is just like, you're going to blame Whitney for this Clark. But Whitney was like clearly unstable. Like, and as we know as viewers, because you know, basically we were there, but no one else was true. He tried to attack 
Kyle. And, and kill. Unprovoked. Murder. Yeah. Cold blood. Murder him. Yes. So th- that kind of stirs up a little drama between Lana and Clark at that point. She's a little pissed off at him. Then, like, during the course of the episode, she just starts popping into the barn. Oh, and yeah. Even though she's pissed at Clark, she's just like, she can't shake it. She can't shake the fact that she's pissed off at him for, like, blaming Whitney for that. <laughs> but she keeps showing up at his barn to like I don't know if she's trying to figure it out or right. or what but it's very interesting when there's this gal that you, you really like she likes you do but she's pissed at you showing up at your room all the time <laughs> <laughs> I, I really had something like stern to talk to you about Clark Clark but let me just sneak into your barn without <laughs> letting you know at all it just seems like that's a lot of effort yeah it's like a lot of effort for being a little pissed well, off she clearly likes him and and probably the reason yeah. she's pissed at him is just you know because she likes him yeah and like he you know and like basically he biffed it and fucked it up and got them back together and started talking about whitney in the previous episode Mm -hmm. and so she's just like what the fuck clark like everything was going smooth i guess that makes sense i guess i can see it kind of from from her point of view on that one but it's still it's still fucking weird she's like showing up in his room but anyway um this is the, the the icing on the cake moment for me this is when I when I saw this part happen in 2001 airing, I was freaking out because I was a, always a big supporter of Clark and Chloe getting together because I had like a huge crush on Chloe at it the time. It totally should have happened. And like Clark is just like, Clark, why don't you see what's right in front of your face? Yeah. Your little cute detective friend likes you. And and like nobody who cares about Lana, right? <laughs> um, but uh, there's the moment where Kyle... Um, is proving to Chloe that he has the ability. And he tells Chloe to express her true feelings to Clark. Oh, yeah. Full on, like, make out. Well, not a full on make out, but like, it was like a long kiss. Yeah. I remember watching that when it was airing and I was like, yes. But I think, I think maybe Clark was into it a little bit because he, he didn't he, stop her. He, he wasn't didn't stop just, her. Yeah. He's like, oh, is this a thing? <laughs> <laughs> Like it was that, it, as if that was the first time that it ever occurred right. to him, you know. And and then like Chloe doesn't remember that that happened because I guess you forget what you did when you're told to do something with that ability. Right. You just kind of wake up and snap out of it. Yeah. But anyway, that was really satisfying when I was younger. I saw this. Was like, that the only time that they've kissed in the show? I, no, no, no. We'll get there. We'll okay. get there as as episodes come come by. All right. All right. Um. All right. And then at the end of it, Lana and Clark are friends again. Uh, it doesn't make any sense because there's there's actually no resolution. That's you know that's again that's what we did when we were younger. People were fucking awful to each other. Yeah. Like man, high school is just like a proving ground. You're pissed at your friend for like three days, and all of a sudden you're like best friends again. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. So moving on to the drinking game party can officially begin the luthers are here in this drinking game it's pretty light um oh. i would have to say this one's a pretty weak episode for drinking so we can drink some hard a hard a episode get out the hard a bust it maybe some raspberry schnapps or <laughs> hey <laughs> yeah puckers you know that's what we should do we should start suggesting what kind of liquor you should like what is the type of liquor that's appropriate for this specific episode <laughs> yeah like Drink, drink some raspberry schnapps, some puckers, like root beer flavor or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and pretend that you're in Smallville High in 2001. Exactly. Because <laughs> everybody I, wants that. I don't even know if they still make that shit. Probably. Maybe. <laughs> uh, we have someone says son or father. That is one time. And I believe it's mm. Jonathan. Oh, that makes sense. Foreshadowing, we have four. Oh. Four instances of it. Is it f- because like they keep mentioning Clark putting on a costume or something? Putting on a costume. Uh, there was like the first time we find out that Clark is bulletproof. All mm-hmm. this, all this stuff we'll, we'll get to. But at the Greek, yeah, yeah. There's four as far as like what future episodes and future like plot lines are going to hold, whether that be the show or the yeah comics. So yeah, this is an interesting rule actually because you kind of have to know the show to count that as a as a drink. Right. You have to like know that it happens later. It's very subtle, but yeah. just. Yeah, four is good for that one. Uh, glass shattering twice. Two times. Yep. We're still t- uh, 11 for 11 on that one. Still. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that that is it. That is a total of seven. Damn. Okay, well, um, geek lore. This is Smallville. Meteor freaks, alien ships, cryptic symbols. Someone has to protect the world. So for this episode, uh, we've got some good ones unlike the last one which had next to nothing but he does clark does say putting on a suit and flying 
Yes. Uh, when referencing how ridiculous the situation is. Yes. Uh, he crushes that guy's hand, Bob Rickman. That, yeah, I, I mentioned that to you. I was like, oh, yeah. shit, that's just like Superman too." Yeah, totally. Um, and you actually hear, it almost sounds like the exact same uh, sound effect that they used, like the bones crushing. Yeah, maybe they... In the hand. Maybe they even... <laughs> used it ripped you know, yeah ripped it for, for that one which superman 2 is great richard donner cut i think is the best version of it i like the story more in that one but the cg just it takes me out of it it's awful it's all he tried to do like a george in. lucas on like yeah. a quarter of the budget or something for that um but it also creates like a darker tone for the film in that cut like general zod seems so goofy in the first cut of yeah. superman 2 yeah and it's it's a joke. And in this one, he actually seems like legitimately scary. Yeah. Like Terrence Stamp, who later is Jorel, the yeah. voice of Jorel. Yeah, in, that's a that's a show. big thing. Once once we start hearing about Jorel, spoiler, Jorel's in the show. Yeah. Um that's gonna be big on the geek lore radar. It's also the first time uh we see that Clark is bulletproof. And and what's interesting about this one is he bruises when he gets hit by bullets, which Right. So it's not like he, he's like still not fully developed. It's like a, you know becoming super right like maybe he needs to spend more time in the sun get work on that tan Clark. exactly <laughs> learn how to fucking fly guy drink drink its rays <laughs> <laughs> drink it up soak it up and then also uh interesting tidbit at the end we had we had mentioned this i think in the overview but the final scene with clark and lex when they're when talking about their friendship says our friendship will be the stuff of legend oh yeah which I think is a pretty juicy little tidbit. It is incredibly juicy uh, when you are talking about the two most iconic foes in all comic books. You know, right. A little little line drop like that, like even a casual person, it's not like the biggest Superman fan or whatever, would see that and be like, oh, fucking foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> but what's what's so cool about this series too is is just... The fact that they do have a friendship before that. And yeah. I think the comics later on adopted many different versions of when they might have met as kids or teenagers totally. uh, or whatever. Um, yeah, I love it. Yeah, their their friendship also seems like believable, even though like everybody knows that Lex eventually turns evil. Yeah. But like the reason why, or at least as far as Clark is concerned, uh, it makes a lot of sense because yeah. Clark out of necessity had to lie to him. Yeah. And he sort of broke the illusion mm -hmm. that uh, that he was perfect, that he was good, that he was infallible, you know, then it just sort of tipped, tipped him over the edge. Yep. Um, it's which, just, you know, we'll get to that obviously in many, yeah, many, but it's still like, it's super compelling. Um, it's being like dissected in this high school drama TV show. Yeah. Like, a lot of people are like really excited about the new Spider-Man movie coming out because it's like him focused uh, on being in high school, being a juggling, being a superhero and all that stuff. Right. It's just interesting that like that we're seeing that in Smallville, but also the development of Clark and Lex Luthor as friends is something you can just see going so sour. Like yeah. no matter how you look at it, you're like the closer they get, the worse it's going to be. And every time they get into a little tiff, you're like, oh, is it going to be now? Is it going to be yeah, now? Yeah, you're waiting like, for it. No, it doesn't happen for like six or seven seasons, but... Yeah. So do we have any uh, crew spotlights? I'm to help create the look of the show to tell the story visually. Yeah, our, our crew spotlight, I think, I think was... I don't know. I, I think that this one, much like uh, Shimmer, our previous episode, Shimmer. was uh, kind of lame. And it's even lame yeah. as far as the people who have like worked on this episode. Yeah. But uh, we'll go ahead and, and do a bigger name, and we'll do Eric Johnson, who plays Whitney. Oh, okay. On the show, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go with a cast member here. Yeah, and who more recently will will be featured <laughs> in Fifty Shades Darker. I as, couldn't. I could not. As someone, some his interest. name's like Jack, and he and he's like the love interest for the the main character. He's like a weird. He, I think he's like a rebound character to Gray. Yeah. Um. I, I mean, just purely based off the trailers I've seen for Darker Shades of Gray, or what's it? Fifty Darker. Fifty Shades Darker. Oh god. <laughs> uh, he showed up in that uh, in that trailer, and I was just like, "Fuck, it's Whitney." Well, glad to see he's working. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's also like, I mean, his character in Smallville, he's he's functional. He's a plot device, but he's barely a character. Yeah. And uh, 
yeah, I, I have no, <laughs> I have no respect for him as an actor, but we'll just bring him up because he's in a few things you might have seen. He was in Legends of the Fall, yeah, with uh, Brad Pitt, and hopefully he doesn't ha- he he didn't have to sport his fucking awful haircut and anything else besides Smallville. <laughs> <laughs> that part is just insane. It was it was ten years ago that they tried to reboot Flash Gordon on the Sci Fi Channel, starring uh, Eric Johnson. Oh my god. God, that's he is such a wooden actor. That would have been awful. Yeah, as a as a main character, I just don't I don't see him. You know, I'm sorry to talk shit about him. Eh. He's probably an okay person, but hey, he's got work. He's in he's in the big big Hollywood film. Yeah, I guess a big Hollywood big porno Hollywood film. <laughs> um, <laughs> I very much like to see him. <laughs> uh, he was in The Nick, which I know is very popular amongst our friends. But, yes, I have uh, not seen it. Though. I've seen a few episodes, and I didn't really understand what was going on, other than it was a little bit cringeworthy maybe yeah. it hurts a little like, bit to why? watch why is this a thing uh so yeah crew spotlight eric johnson love you eric potentially showing us johnson in a theater near yeah. you very soon good canadian kid That's you know right. we will uh we will be seeing more of him in the show for sure <laughs> for how long who knows dun, dun, dun. <laughs> anyway uh <laughs> that was so stupid where can people find you on the internet jason they can find me on twitter Ooh. At Jason underscore Lamb and on Instagram at JTL underscore Hell. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, you can find me at Mike Pelly on the social media platforms. That's Mike with a Y. Don't fuck it up. I will be there if you look for me. Send me a message. Send us a message. Yeah, let us know what you think. You know, actually, we I'm going to go ahead and, and just plug our iTunes, our feed right now. We, you know, we're still a new podcast. We're trying to get things more up on a weekly basis. It's. You know, when you start these things up, sometimes it can take a little bit of time to get the, the you know, the, the, the wheels, the wheels are turning. But uh, yeah, show us some support on iTunes. Just give us a review, whatever, and uh, we'll keep pumping these out for you. Thanks for listening. We'll be back for the next episode 12. I don't know what it's called, but I'm sure it's a bad title. See y'all later. Bye bye. Yeah.